Okay, and believe it or not, actually, complex numbers are not that complicated. But that is what we're going to look at now. Okay, so up to now, we're used to looking at this set of numbers. So it includes whole numbers, which we call our integers, or positive whole numbers, which are our natural numbers, then our integers, our rational numbers, and then we've had our fractions or our decimals, our uh, fractions that don't terminate, I suppose, our irrational numbers, our Qs. And they're all incorporated in what we call the real numbers. But now we're moving on to complex numbers and we're going to, that set actually incorporates all of what we've had before and even includes a little bit more. So we're going to look at a new image of that. Okay, so now we can see this diagram here. We have expanded our set of numbers and here we have a bigger kind of universe almost with complex numbers, uh, which incorporates all of our real numbers. But now we've this new type of numbers which are called imaginary numbers. They're also very importantly, they're represented by the letter I. So there we have it on the kind of basis of complex numbers. But what's really important for us to remember is that complex numbers always, always, always include real numbers and imaginary numbers. That's, they're basically a mixture of both of those together. Okay, so we're gonna look a little bit more at where these imaginary numbers come from. And in fact, really, they're not all that imaginary at all there, um, but that's just the name that's given to them. Okay, so any time you would have looked up on a calculator, maybe the square root of minus four or something, we would have gotten an image that was something like this on our calculators. Okay, so we'd have gotten an error image. Okay, and that's because we, or our calculators, aren't able to cope with a negative square root. So if we had looked up the square root, say, of 4, a positive number, we'd have just gotten the answer of 2. But we know that minus 2 squared also gives us 4, because minus by minus is plus 2 by 2 is 4. And so what we want to look at now is, well, what if I had this minus 4? But because our calculators or our computers, likewise, aren't able to cope with it, we've developed this other branch of maths, um, or discovered it, I suppose, more so, is in is that it has been discovered and it adds a new dimension to it. And so here, somebody decided, well, what if I break it up and I say, I'm going to have minus 1 multiplied by that 4. And I'm going to call that minus 1 i for an imaginary number. Well, then I have minus 1, which is i, that solves that bit. And I'm going to say that the square root 4, well, we know that's 2. So actually, the square root of minus 4 is going to be equal to 2i. So that's basically where our imaginary numbers come from. So it comes from the impossibility of finding the square root of a negative number. Okay. So basically, what we've covered so far is that in every complex number, there is two parts. There is the real part. And then there is the imaginary part. Now, generally, complex numbers look something like this. They might be written like z is equal to 3 plus 4i. So I think very easily we can see, well, this is the real part. It's a real number that we're used to before. And here that the part that has the i is the imaginary part. Again, we might have something that says um, z is equal to 2 minus 7i. And again, we'd know here we have the real and here we have the imaginary. Uh, similarly, we might have here another one where we are called z and just that it's equal to 3i. Now it's still, it is still a complex number. It just has an imaginary part this time, or not that it has no real part, but its real part is equal to zero. Okay, so that's, and similarly, we could have another complex number where again, we're told it's Z, 
but we might just be said that z is equal to 4. And so we know then that that's the same as 4 plus 0i, that its imaginary part is equal to 0. Okay, so that's the essence of, um, or the very basis of complex numbers. So open up Schoology now, and there's a short quiz just classifying which parts of complex numbers are the real parts and which parts are the imaginary parts. Okay, make sure again as well that you've all these notes in your copy. So just a very quick recap then. We know basically complex numbers are made up of two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. And the real part is always is always this bit here on without any kind of i beside it. So it's the regular numbers that we're used to, whether they are positive or negative or fractions or decimals or whole numbers, but it's the bit without any i attached to it. And then so consequently, um, therefore, I suppose, we could say then that the imaginary part is always the bit that has the i attached to it. Okay, so that's always the bit with the eye attached to it. And then just further to our recap, um, as we've said here already, um, if we have something and we're said told z equals 4i, for example, it doesn't mean that there's no real part. It just means that the real part is equal to 0. And likewise, if we're told that z is equal to 4 and is a complex number, again, it doesn't mean that there's no imaginary part but that the imaginary part is equal to zero. That's all that is. Okay, so again, make sure all the notes are in your copy, open up Schoology, complete the quiz, and then you'll be on to the next stage.